are rejoicing and we're glad in it. Uh, welcome to First Reform United Church of Christ here in the city of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where we are an open and affirming church, meaning whether you're black or white, gay or straight, rich or poor, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome and loved here at First Reform Church. Um, I, I stand also to announce the passing of uh, Reverend Dr. Ron Christensen. He passed on yesterday, and so service arrangements will be forthcoming, and so we want to keep uh, Darlene and his family uh, in prayer. He passed away on yesterday. Also, we're glad to have Larry back. Glad to have Larry back. And our vintage organ must have missed him because when he came back, some of the keys and pedals and things aren't working. So if you hear a different sound this morning, that's what it is. But he has a tech coming out this week that'll take care of it. But we just glad to have you back, Larry. Glad to have you back. Uh, are there any other announcements? And so you'll see the new names all around our church just assigned. 
Bible that everyone knows that we are open and affirm at the church, giving our dedication that whoever you are, wherever you are, on my journey, there is a place for you at 40 East Orange Street in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Amen? So if you see these men, that's the day. That's the day of the night. Uh, can we take the front door? Good morning to all our friends and friends that are watching online. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. If you're able to, please stand for our call to worship. Behold a miracle. A valley full of dry bones. It's transformed into a people of love and life. Behold a miracle.
God of promise and hope, we come to you feeling dried up, like a valley filled with dry bones. Share your vision of new life with us, so that we may have hope for our future. Bring us up from the grave, that we might live as people of promise. Put your spirit within us, that we might have life everlasting. The Bible instructs us that the God that we serve is faithful, and the God that we serve is just to forgive us of our sins. FRC, let us say our confession together. Lord of life, we come to you consumed by our worry and pain, and we blame you for not being there in our need. Forgive us. When we turn away from you in moments of loss, guide us back to your faithful arms. When we long to put our faith in your promised healing, we learn to believe that you are the resurrection and the life truly. Teach us once more, merciful, that you be what you be, and rejoice in the behind our own. This is our prayer. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. FRC, hear now the words of assurance, the one who showed Ezekiel that a valley of dry bones could live again will bring us newness of life through Christ, who is the resurrection and the life and through community. You may be seated.
visitors visiting with FRC today, could you just wave at us so that we might see you? I see your hands, I see your hands. FRC, would you do me a favor? Would you stretch our hands towards our visitors? Say, we're so glad you came. We're so glad you came. Please come again. Please come again. God loves you. God loves you. And we do too. And here's a portion we all can participate in, and it is the passing of the peace. And depending upon how comfortable you are, you can embrace the person that is sitting close to you. You can put your hand over your heart and say, peace be with you. You can tap fists, you can tap toes, you can tap elbows, or you can wave at them from across the sanctuary like you're from Great Britain. But whatever you do, you have to pass the peace, all right? So may the peace of Christ, well, no, I got a slide. Let me read what we got here. We are not a valley of dry bones, but a people of light and love, a people of passion and vitality who draw strength from one another. Let us share the joy of being alive as we pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. FRC, now let us share the peace of Christ. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Our Old Testament lesson for today is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as, he had as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, 
prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy. And say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. And our gospel is John 11, 1 through 45. We begin with the death of Lazarus. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you, you're going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not with them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while, Martha, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, 
your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. and have our very being. 
So God, I pray now that they not see Devin, but that they see you, that they not hear Devin, but that they hear you. God, I thank you even now that our eyes are anointed to see, our ears are anointed to hear, and our hearts are anointed to understand. And we thank you, God, that our lives will be made the better as a result of the word we hear today. So we thank you and give you praise. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Ervo Otino was allegedly killed while in police custody. Video showed that this young black man was smothered by hospital staff and Virginia Sheriff deputies. Politicians are walking around free after paying hush money. Uganda Parliament passes a bill criminalizing, identifying as LGBTQ, and even imposing death penalties for some of the offenses. All across our country, gender-affirming care bans are being passed. Arizona, Utah, South Dakota, Iowa, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, and Florida. In Arkansas, Governor Huckabee on Tuesday signed a bill into law that would bar transgender people from using the restroom that does not align with the sex that is listed on their birth certificate. Instead of just creating a unisex bathroom, they are barring folks from the bathroom, locker rooms, changing rooms, and shower rooms. And it allows if a superintendent, a teacher, a principal, a pastor, a counselor, or anyone allows them to go into the restroom, they can be fined a minimum of $1,000. Tennessee has moved to permanently expel police officers who beat Tyree Nichols, but one of the officers before he could be expelled retired so he could get his pension. Beloved, you and I can testify and say all around us, there are crises. Crises dealing with finances, crises dealing with sex, crises dealing with all types of things that you can imagine. And the truth be, mad, the truth be told, crises do not discriminate. Crises will come whether you are black or white. Crises will come whether you are gay or straight. And the difference is that you may not see a crisis the way I see a crisis, and I may not see a crisis the way you see a crisis. Well, come up close and look at the gospel text that Alyssa read for us this morning. I know it was a little lengthy this morning. We normally don't read it that long. But I wanted you to get the gist of the whole story. I wanted you to get the just, that's the angels in the balcony talking. I wanted you to get the just of the story and see this crisis with a family. The family here is made up of two sisters, Martha and Mary, and a brother named Lazarus. And it is significant that the story of Lazarus here in the Gospel of John is the reading for the last Sunday in Lent, the Sunday immediately preceding Palm Sunday. Oh, it is here in the Gospel of John that this temple scene is moved, and we see here that the raising of Lazarus in cites the plot for the arrest of Jesus. Let me say it again. The raising of Lazarus incited the plot for Jesus' arrest and death. Oh yes, the raising of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus, beloved, is one of the last signs. Let the church say signs. Signs in the Gospel of John. Yes, it, these were the signs to show that they believed in Jesus. This family, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, were very close to Jesus. Uh, the scripture tells us that while Jesus was traveling with his disciples, he learns that his friend Lazarus is ill. And instead of jumping on the first thing, smoking and getting to where Lazarus was, the Bible lets us know that Jesus continued teaching and traveling. That when Jesus finally reaches Lazarus' hometown, Mary, Martha, and them come to him and they tell him he hears word that his friend Lazarus is now dead. 
And the Bible says that Jesus weeps. Oh, this is not one of my major points, but it is a point of scrutiny. Let me encourage you that it's all right to cry in a crisis. Whether you are a man or a woman, society would try to teach us men that we're not supposed to cry, that it's not manly to cry, that it's not manly to get in touch with your sensitive or feminine side. But I want you to know Jesus shows you and I, it's all right to cry in a crisis. That you don't have to keep it all bogged down. You don't have to keep it all in that you can let it out. Somebody say, let it out. You can let it out. You can let it out. Jesus cries when he hears those words. And, and the text goes on to tell us that Jesus loved them. And even though Jesus loved them, Jim, it didn't exempt them from a crisis. I feel like preaching in here. I said, just because Jesus loves you, that does not exempt you from tests. It does not exempt you from trials. It does not exempt you from going through a crisis. Maybe the crisis was a bad diagnosis from a doctor. Maybe the crisis was finding out that you didn't have enough money to pay your mortgage. Maybe the crisis was a loved one going on to glory. Maybe your crisis was trying to figure out how you were going to make ends meet. Maybe the crisis is dealing in your body or your soul or your spirit. I don't know who I came to preach to this morning, but I do know that there are some folks that are dealing with a crisis. The crisis has creeped up into your house. The crisis has came to your crib. The crisis has taken up residence on your couch, but I want you to know that there is a Christ or Jesus is in your crisis. That you're not in that crisis by yourself. And notice what happens. Jesus sees this family in the midst of this crisis and showed up and did for them what they could not do for themselves. Remember, Jesus did not move the stone, but Jesus asked them to move the stone away that was there at, G at Lazarus' cave or tomb. And when he removed the stone from there, Jesus called Lazarus from the dead. And we learned that from that, that you and I can also know that God can call us out of crisis. The Bible said that after he called Lazarus from the dead, he then tells the village people to loose Lazarus and let him go. And beloved, that's the responsibility of the church. The church is supposed to be about loosening, untiring people from any form of bondage, from any form of discrimination, from any form of hate, and to let them go. To let them go means to empower them or to equip them. And so many times we rob others of this. We rob of the opportunity and instead of showing love, they're shown hate. We're bound to tradition, we're bound to different things, but the Bible teaches you and I that the Son can set you free. So we've traveled now with this family and we see a painful time that they are facing this crisis. Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus got sick and died. But God, Jesus, God's Son, Jesus came and brought some type of calmness in the midst of the family's crisis. In the midst of the family crisis. And in our text, when I would often read this, you, we focus on the part of Jesus saying, I am the resurrection. But what about the latter part of it that says, I am the life? Yes, there is resurrection power in having a relationship with God and with community and loving our neighbors as ourselves. But what about life that's filled with crises, that's filled with chaos and confusion? What is the good news that you're saying to us this morning, Pastor D? I'm glad you asked. It is this, that there is a Christ in your crisis. And this is the thing. I'm not just necessarily speaking of Jesus Christ, quote unquote, but there is a Christ that there is someone or something that can come in your crisis and get you out. Maybe your Christ is a counselor. Say counselor. 
That's right, it could be a counselor. It could be somebody that you could go and unload so that you won't overload. It could be somebody that you can talk to about your feelings, about what you're going through. Not just your pastor, not just your best friend, not just your partner, but going to somebody that is a licensed professional that can tell you what to do. But maybe your crisis isn't a counselor, maybe your crisis is a companion. Let the church say companion companion that's right maybe it's your partner maybe it's your brother your sister maybe it's your best friend maybe it's someone but all of us I feel God right here all of us need somebody to help us when we are in a crisis I got caught this cold these last two weeks and couldn't shake it but every day I loved I got a text from someone saying pastor we're praying for you pastor do you need something pastor are you all right why because they were checking and that's how it is when you in a crisis you want somebody to check on you. You want somebody to let you know that it's not going to end badly, that you're going to get through it. But not only is there, Christ could be your counselor or your companion, but maybe it's a colleague. Maybe it's someone that thinks like you, that believes like you, that works like you, that fights like you, that stands like you. Beloved, I don't know what crisis you may be facing this morning, but just like the crises of the dry bones dealing with Ezekiel, the crises dealing with Mary and Martha and Lazarus, my encouragement to you is that there is a Christ in your crisis. And so God, our prayer is to show us where you're working and allow us to join you there. And Martin Luther King said it like this, every crisis has both its dangers and its opportunities. Each can spell either salvation or it could spell doom. So the encouragement, what is faith forward? It's you knowing that there is a Christ in your crisis. Let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs>
God, we thank you for reminding us this morning that whatever we're facing, we're not going through it by ourselves. Thank you, God, that all of our lives, we deal with different crises, different situations. The text today said that these situations can bring you glory. God, we thank you for opportunities that come in our lives that people will see you through us, that we are Jesus in the earth. And so help us to be there for someone in a crisis. You heard the prayer request this morning. Some are going through, God, believing you for a child. Some are going through, God, believing you for a kidney. Some are going through, God, believing you, oh God, for a job or for a loved one. And we thank you that there is nothing too hard for you. So I thank you, God, for touching Deb and touching Darlene and Joanne and Kathy and Pat and Sue and Kay and Ron and Janet and Janine and Paula and Kathy and Ed. God, touch Bruce and Alta and Don, Richard and Brian, Diane and Pedro and Los, touch Abby and Sean, touch Jackie, touch Terry, touch Paul and Sedina, Pam and Colleen, Marianne Rimley, touch the Kraft family, touch Rick Weinho, touch the people of Ukraine and Russia and Armenia, touch God Frank and Shara, God, touch Glennis and Jimmy, God, be God with all of the requests that we made today, be with and God as she go for surgery tomorrow be with Carol God as she goes for surgery God be with Neil and Bruce God and Michelle God God so many we need you we need healing we need peace we need joy we need love and we pray today the way you taught your disciples to pray and saying our father who art in heaven how be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's now time for our tithes and our offerings.
be returned, not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. Bless those that gave and those that had the desire to give. Also bless those that gave online. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Where is the year going? Isn't that something? Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Our closing hymn, our closing hymn is If You But Trust in God to Guide You, and it's found on page 410. to which we are called. Go on the fellowship of Jesus Christ who claims us as siblings. Go on the community of the Holy Spirit who binds us together with all the saints. Go with grace to shine God's love and to know that there's a Christ in your crises. Amen and amen. Have a blessed week.